Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're delving into a thought-provoking poem, The Planners, by Boi Kim Ching. We will explore the life of the author and his famous works, dive into poetic devices, discuss the structure and form of the poem, and then I will provide a comprehensive summary. Let's begin. Boi Kim Cheng is a Singaporean-Australian poet renowned for his insightful and reflective poetry. Born in Singapore in 1965, he later moved to Australia. His unique perspective often bridges the gap between Eastern and Western cultures, which is reflected in his works. Some of his notable works include Somewhere Bound, Another Place, and Girl Between Heaven and Earth. These works often explore themes of identity, cultural displacement, and the impact of rapid urbanization. Penned by the renowned poet Boi Kim Cheng, this poem invites us into a world where urbanization, development, and the relentless pursuit of perfection collide with the past. In this video, we will embark on a journey through Boi Kim Cheng's evocative verses, exploring the poet's unique perspective, the poetic devices he employs, the structure and form of the poem, and the powerful themes that underlie his words. As we delve into this poem, You'll gain not only a deeper understanding of this captivating poem but also a broader appreciation for the art of poetry itself. In this poem, words and emotions intertwine to convey a profound message about the changing landscapes of our lives. The planners is divided into three stanzas with varying lengths, nine lines in the first stanza, ten lines in the second, and four lines in the third. The poem is written in free verse, meaning it lacks a specific rhyme scheme or metrical pattern allowing for a natural and unrestricted flow of language. This form complements the themes of change and urbanization explored in the poem, as it mirrors the unstructured and evolving nature of modern life. Now, let's explore the poetic devices used in the planners. Cheng employs vivid imagery, metaphors, personification, and alliteration to convey his powerful message. These devices help create a rich and engaging reading experience. Enjambment is the continuation of a sentence or phrase beyond the end of a line or stanza. In the poem, enjambment is used to create a sense of continuous movement and progress, mirroring the unceasing construction and development described in the poem. Enjambment is found multiple times throughout this poem, for example, between the lines 3 to 6 and between 13 and 14. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of words in close proximity. In these examples, it adds rhythm and emphasis to the phrases, making them more memorable and impactful. This poem is filled with the use of alliteration. Examples are shown on your screen. Metaphor involves comparing one thing to another to create a vivid image or insight. For example, in this case, the country wears perfect rows of shining teeth, metaphorically likens the city's appearance to a smiling mouth with orderly, shiny teeth. This imagery conveys a sense of artificiality and superficiality in the city's perfection. Repetition refers to the use of the same word or phrase multiple times to provide clarity and emphasis, highlighting deeper meanings in the text. The poet repeatedly uses the third-person pronoun, they, to separate the planners from the rest of the citizens. By using this generic, they, the poet tries not to call out anyone but subtly criticizes the activities of some persons in society. Assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds within words in close proximity. For example, the E sound in linked by bridges and the A sound in dental dexterity. Cisura is a pause or break within a line of poetry, often indicated by punctuation. You can find examples of cisura in the first line and the 20th and 21st lines. This poem explores several significant themes, as shown on your screen. Progress and Development versus Nature this theme highlights the conflict between urban development and the natural environment. The poem portrays the relentless pursuit of progress, symbolized by construction and urbanization, as it encroaches upon and alters the natural world, anonymous bureaucracy and its effect on people's future. The poem suggests that the planners and developers operate as an anonymous bureaucracy, making decisions that impact the lives of the people. It explores how these decisions shape the future of the city's inhabitants. The artist as an interpreter of progress. This theme reflects on the role of the artist or poet as someone who interprets and critiques the changes brought about by progress. The speaker, in this case, serves as the voice that questions and reflects upon the developments. Degradation of natural land. 
The poem implies that the natural landscape is degraded or diminished by the relentless development, as seen in lines like, even the sea draws back, it raises concerns about environmental degradation in the pursuit of progress. Development versus Environment Closely related to the previous theme, this theme explores the tension between development and environmental preservation. The poem suggests that development often takes precedence at the expense of the environment, historical and cultural discarding. The planners touches on the idea that in the process of modernization and development, historical and cultural elements from the past are discarded or erased. This theme underscores the loss of identity and heritage. The Speaker's Paradox The speaker in the poem experiences a paradox where, despite witnessing all the changes and development, his heart does not inspire poetry or emotional response. This theme explores the disconnect between the poet's emotions and the transformations happening around him. Bureaucracy in Project Development The poem hints at a bureaucratic approach to urban development, where decisions are made methodically and without emotional attachment to the past. It illustrates how bureaucracy can sometimes lead to the erasure of history. They plan, they build, all spaces are gridded, filled with permutations of possibilities, the buildings are in alignment with the roads, which meet at desired points, linked by bridges all hang, in the grace of mathematics, they build and will not stop, even the sea draws back, and the sky surrender. Let's go through difficult words before continuing with the line-by-line -line explanation. Gridded means arranged in a grid or lattice pattern. Here, it describes how spaces are meticulously organized in a structured grid in the context of urban planning. Permutations are arrangements or combinations of elements in different orders. Here, it refers to the various possible arrangements or configurations that urban spaces can take under the planner's control. Alignment is the arrangement in a straight line or in correct relative positions. Here, it indicates that buildings are positioned in a straight line with roads, emphasizing order and precision in the city's layout. Desired means wished for or wanted. Here, it suggests that the roads meet at specific points according to the planner's intentions. Grace means elegance, beauty, or charm. Here, it describes the elegant and harmonious nature of the city's layout achieved through mathematical precision. Surrender means to give up or yield. Here, it implies that even natural elements like the sea and skies yield or give way to human development. This line sets the tone for the entire poem by introducing the actions of the people in control, the planners and builders. They are actively involved in shaping the city. This line conveys the idea that every space within the city is meticulously organized and structured. The word, gridded, suggests a strict, geometric layout. Permutations of possibilities implies that the city's layout is highly organized and designed with a multitude of potential uses or arrangements, but within a controlled framework. This line emphasizes the precision and orderliness of the city's construction. Buildings are carefully placed so that they align with the roads, reinforcing the idea of a perfectly planned urban environment. The roads in the city are intentionally designed to intersect or meet at specific locations. These intersections are not haphazard but strategically planned. This part of the stanza highlights the elegance and precision of the city's infrastructure. The bridges that connect different parts of the city are described as hanging in the grace of mathematics, suggesting that their design is not just functional but also aesthetically pleasing and mathematically precise. This line underscores the relentless nature of the planners and builders. They are continuously constructing and developing the city without any intention of pausing or ceasing their activities. It suggests an unwavering commitment to progress and expansion. This line carries a metaphorical and perhaps even literal meaning. Metaphorically, it suggests that the city's development is so relentless that even the natural world, represented by the sea, seems to retreat or be pushed back by it. In a literal sense, this could refer to land reclamation or changes in the coastline due to urbanization, a phenomenon seen in some coastal cities. Here, the poet personifies the skies, implying that they too submit or yield to the overwhelming urbanization. This personification emphasizes the dominance of human construction over the natural environment. They erase the flaws, the blemishes of the past, knock off useless blocks with dental dexterity. All gaps are plugged with gleaming gold. The country wears perfect rows of shining teeth, anesthesia, amnesia, hypnosis. They have the means. They have it all so it will not hurt. So history is new again. The piling will not stop. The drilling goes right through the fossils of last century.
Flaws are imperfections or defects. Here, it refers to imperfections or shortcomings in the cityscape that the planners aim to eliminate. Blemishes are marks or imperfections that mark the appearance. Similar to flaws, it signifies undesirable elements in the cityscape that the planners want to remove. Dexterity means skill and agility. Here, it describes the skill and precision with which the planners remove unwanted elements during construction. Plugged means filled or sealed tightly. Here, it suggests that gaps or spaces are sealed or filled with gleaming gold, emphasizing perfection. Anesthesia is a medical state induced to numb pain. Amnesia is a condition characterized by partial or total memory loss. Hypnosis is a trance-like state of heightened suggestibility. These terms collectively describe how the planners have the means to control and manipulate the perceptions and memories of the people, ensuring they accept changes without pain, forget the past, and are influenced by the new narrative. Means are the methods or resources used to achieve something. In the poem, means refer to the tools, methods, or resources available to the planners to control and shape the cityscape. Piling is the process of driving foundation piles into the ground during construction. Drilling is the act of making holes or tunnels using a drilling tool. Fossils are preserved remains or traces of ancient organisms. Here, it is used metaphorically to represent remnants or traces of the past, such as historical or cultural elements from a previous era, which are disrupted or destroyed by urban development. This line suggests that the planners and builders are dedicated to removing any imperfections or remnants of the past in the city. They want to create a clean slate, free from any historical or architectural blemishes. The phrase, dental dexterity, is a metaphorical expression that compares the precision and skill of the builders to that of a dentist. Just as a dentist removes problematic or unnecessary elements from teeth, the builders are metaphorically removing useless blocks from the cityscape with great skill and precision. This line conveys the idea that any gaps or spaces left after the removal of imperfections are filled with something valuable and precious, represented here as gleaming gold. This could symbolize the materialistic and affluent nature of the new city. This line likens the transformed city to a country with perfect rows of shining teeth. This metaphor emphasizes the idea of a flawless, idealized appearance. It also hints at a sense of uniformity and conformity in the city's design as rows of teeth are typically uniform in appearance. These three words suggest that the planners and builders employ various methods to numb, erase, or hypnotize the people and the city's history. These methods are figurative and emphasize how the population is made to forget or become indifferent to the past and the changes occurring around them. This line acknowledges that those in control have the resources and power to carry out their plans effectively. They can shape the city as they see fit. This phrase implies that the planners and builders have everything under their control, so the process of urban development doesn't cause pain or discomfort to the people. It could also suggest that they shield the public from the negative consequences or discomfort associated with rapid change and progress. This line is significant because it touches on the central theme of the poem. The planners' efforts to erase, transform, and control the city are so thorough that they effectively rewrite history. The past is made to seem as though it never existed or is irrelevant, and the city is portrayed as if it has a completely fresh start. This line emphasizes the continuous and ceaseless construction activity in the city. Piling refers to the process of driving piles or columns into the ground as a foundation for buildings or structures. The use of will not stop suggests that this construction is ongoing and shows no sign of ending. The word drilling implies the use of machinery to create holes or tunnels. Yeah, it signifies the invasive and disruptive nature of development as it penetrates deeply into the environment. This line is metaphorical and carries several meanings. Fossils of last century symbolize remnants of the past, which are being literally and figuratively penetrated by modern construction. It suggests that historical and cultural elements from the previous century are being destroyed or overshadowed by the new developments. The use of fossils implies that these elements are becoming ancient history, no longer relevant in the contemporary city. But my heart would not bleed poetry, not a single drop to stain the blueprint of our pasts tomorrow. Stain is a mark that discolors or tarnishes something. Here, it's used metaphorically to suggest that the heart would not produce poetry or emotion to stain the perfect vision of the future. Blueprint is a detailed plan or design, typically a technical drawing outlining a structure. Here, it refers to the meticulously planned vision for the city's future, emphasizing the rigid and calculated approach to development. 
This line conveys that the poet's heart does not inspire or produce poetry in response to the changes happening in the city. In other words, he does not find artistic or emotional inspiration in the urban transformation. This phrase further emphasizes the absence of poetic inspiration or emotion. The blueprint symbolizes the planned, structured, and controlled environment of the city. The poet's heart does not produce anything that would disrupt or stain this orderly blueprint. This line is somewhat paradoxical. It suggests that the city's future is connected to its past, and the poet's inability to generate poetry reflects a disconnect between the two. The poet seems to lament the loss of a deeper, more meaningful connection between the city's history and its present and future state. This poem explores the consequences of relentless urban development and its impact on nature, history, and the human experience. Urbanization and Progress The poem presents a vision of unceasing urban development. The planners and builders are portrayed as relentless, continuously constructing and shaping the city. This underscores the idea of progress as an unstoppable force. Nature versus Human Development One of the central themes is the conflict between nature and human development. The poem personifies nature as it draws back and surrenders in the face of human progress. This portrays the dominance of human will over the natural world. Erasure of History the poem highlights the erasure of the past in the pursuit of modernity. Historical and cultural elements are discarded, and the poem suggests that even the fossils of last century are drilled through, emphasizing the loss of historical and cultural identity. The superficiality of perfection. The planner's name for perfection, filling gaps with gleaming gold. This pursuit of aesthetic perfection is portrayed as superficial and devoid of depth or history, as suggested by the metaphor of perfect rows of shining teeth. It implies a focus on surface appearance at the expense of substance. The role of the artist. The speaker, who might be seen as an artist or poet, serves as the voice of reflection and critique. Despite witnessing the changes, the speaker's heart would not bleed poetry, reflecting a sense of emotional detachment and questioning the role of art in the face of relentless development, loss of identity and culture. The poem alludes to the loss of cultural and historical identity in the wake of modernization. The city's transformation leads to a disconnect from the past, as if history is being rewritten to align with the new vision. Paradox of Progress The poem presents a paradox where progress, symbolized by construction and development, paradoxically leads to a sense of loss and disconnection. While progress promises a better future, it also sacrifices elements of the past and raises questions about the true cost of development. Poetic Devices As we have discussed earlier in this video, Bowie Kim Cheng employs various poetic devices, including enjambment, juxtaposition, alliteration, metaphor, repetition, assonance, and caesura, to create a rich and layered poem. These devices contribute to the poem's rhythm, imagery, and emotional impact. In The Planners, Boi Kim Cheng offers a poignant commentary on the consequences of unbridled urban development. It raises questions about the price of progress, the loss of history and nature, and the role of art in reflecting on societal change. Through vivid imagery and thought-provoking themes, the poem invites readers to contemplate the complex relationship between progress and its effects on the world and the human soul. The Planners by Boi Kim Cheng is a poem that explores the consequences of relentless urban development and the pursuit of perfection. It begins by portraying the city as a meticulously designed space but gradually reveals the hidden costs of this pursuit, including the erasure of history and the transformation of nature. The poem raises questions about the impact of progress and the loss of cultural and historical identity in the face of modernization. In the first stanza, the poem presents an image of urban planners and builders diligently shaping a city. They work relentlessly, organizing every space with meticulous precision in a grid-like pattern, offering numerous possibilities. Buildings align perfectly with roads, linked by bridges, which are described as hanging gracefully, all guided by mathematical precision. The stanza highlights their unwavering commitment to this task, even as nature appears to yield to their efforts, symbolized by the sea drawing back and the sky surrendering. In the second stanza, the poem portrays the planners and builders as meticulous in their quest for a perfect city. They erase any perceived imperfections and remnants of the past with great precision, leaving no room for flaws. Gaps in the cityscape are filled with what is described as gleaming gold, emphasizing the pursuit of superficial perfection. 
The metaphor of the city as perfect rows of shining teeth highlights the emphasis on outward appearance over depth. The stanza introduces words like anesthesia, amnesia, hypnosis, suggesting that the planners have the means to control and manipulate perceptions and memories, ensuring that the changes do not cause discomfort. The stanza concludes with an image of relentless construction, signifying the planner's determination to reshape the cityscape, even if it means disrupting remnants of the past. In the third stanza, the speaker expresses a sense of emotional detachment and creative stagnation in response to the urban development described earlier. The heart's failure to bleed poetry signifies the speaker's inability to find inspiration or emotional connection to the changes. This detachment is underlined by the absence of any creative contribution to the city's future, represented by the untouched blueprint of our past's tomorrow. These lines convey a profound sense of disconnection between the individual's emotions and the ongoing urban transformation. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more literary analysis and educational content. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of the planners by Boi Kim Cheng. We hope you've gained a deeper understanding of this thought-provoking poem. See you in the next video.